Yeah, all right, I'm back. This is part three of the Profile 3D plane. When I left off, I had cut out all the pieces. I told you I was going to go ahead and take it all back apart and do some painting. I'll just tell you real quick how I paint these things. When I had all my pieces apart, I had the KF airfoils off. I just painted the KF airfoil separate and then I used blue painters tape just to tape off the ailerons that I wanted blue and then for the fuselage I just painted that whole piece individually like I said the whole plane was apart when I did the painting alright so when we left off I had all the pieces pretty much assembled, but I went ahead, did my painting, went ahead and assembled the pieces, I hot glued everywhere they connect. I even went ahead and hot glued the KF airfoils on. Then once you get your KF airfoils on, I go ahead and hit a hot glue bead right down the each side. Pretty much anywhere all your pieces connect, you want to put your hot glue. Alright, and for the tail, I went ahead, once I slid my two pieces together for my fuselage, I went ahead and hot glued that spot that we cut put that back together and that was after I already installed my elevator and as you can see I just used scotch tape across both sides of the elevator and then on the underside I always just take and put a few pieces of scotch tape long way This is going to be a 3D plane, so i got to have a lot of movement on the elevator. And the same thing for the, for the rudder. I just put one long piece of scotch tape, and then put a four or five connecting pieces. we got a lot of movement in that rudder. Then for the ailerons, I just went ahead and hit them with a piece of scotch tape right across them. I didn't even bother with the bottoms. You don't have to install no scotch tape down there. But again, make sure you guys hot glue everywhere your pieces connect. Like I just ran a bead down both ends of the wings, all across the front. I already installed my motor. I brushed this motor and prop here. Just went ahead and cut out. Now for you guys, I didn't put it on the plans because I figured whatever motor you use, you can just cut it out to your size. And I just drop it back in there about a half inch. As you can see, the tail's got a lot of movement. My elevator and my rudder. Then our ailerons. up ticker so I'm gonna go ahead and install this aileron servo right now what I'll do is I just take the easiest way to do this I find is I'm using the one servo in the center of the wing after I build pretty much the whole plane like this You gotta get this servo down in here. The best way to do it is I'll just take and cut. Cut a piece out of the top here. Then make sure to cut at an angle. So when I hot glue it back on, it just sits in there like a 
pie slice. Just like that. That way I can just hot glue this thing right back in there real easy. So I just use hot glue and reapply it right there. And the hot glue will actually make that whole piece a lot stronger anyway. I mean, it's never going to break apart in that area. Alright, I got my electronics here. I got a, a little six channel Lemon RX receiver. You just go to LemonRC.com. LemonRX.com, I believe it is little six channel things are awesome they're only like maybe seven bucks to pay for that thing and again I got my nine gram servos that came with my brushless combo all right here I got my aileron servo already hooked up and ready to go I'll go ahead and drop the wire down through here I'm just going to hook up the, the aileron servo and show you how I go about. There, I push my servo down in there real nice. Fit perfect. But I'm just going to hook up the aileron servo with the, the rods, carbon fiber rod, push rods basically, and then install. hinges here all right so the best way to do this I just pop that sucker up a little bit you can hit some hot glue on both sides and push it back down I don't use a ton of hot glue because it sits in there pretty good. That way when I pull this plane apart and make something else, you know, once you crash, you can just pull your servo right out and pull that hot glue right off the servo. Alright. Then you see our little piece of pie gonna go back on there. Just gonna trim back a little bit. like that I'll go ahead and do that right now don't need a ton of hot glue there Excess glue. And there it is, you guys. Alright, so I got my aileron servo installed. Let's go ahead and hook up this receiver. Uh, the battery I'll be using is this little 1300 milliamp, 11.1 .1 volt. This 
is a 25C discharge. You can get this from like hobbypartscom or I might bump it up to this battery here which is another 3 cell I believe it's a 2200 and it might be 25 to 30 C I'll see which one works best battery real quick see what we got binding oh. and look at my ESC doing this by memory let's see what we get with this go I just try to remember all right there so there we got our aileron servo all installed it's all centered all right now when you install these you know the further you move them if you put it over the hinge line you're not going to get a whole lot of movement so the further you pull them back on your wing or on your aileron, the more movement you'll get out of your aileron. I'll show you what I mean when I go to put them on here. So if you have it up over your hinge line, you'll get less movement. The further you drop them back on the aileron, the more movement you'll get. And we're going to want quite a bit of movement because it is a 3D plane. And I'll take an, uh, install all this in the video. Hopefully I got enough time. And another thing, when you get done gluing all your pieces together and you install your elevator, your rudder, and you're pretty much all wrapped up, I always go back and hit everything with some scotch clear tape. And then here I got some easy start packing tape. And I like to hit all the all the pieces you can, you know. Just try to cover a lot of it in clear tape. Like I'll use packing tape to fold over both sides of the front of, leading edge of the wing. Run some packing tape there. Run some scotch tape down the length of the fuselage on all sides. And it makes it super strong then so this plane will never crack apart you know I mean unless you come in for a hard crash so make sure you guys go ahead and clear tape wherever you think you want to strengthen up the foam board and like I said I like to do it on all the edges here across the wing now I didn't use no <clears throat> carbon fiber rod 
this plane is designed where with the KF airfoil on here and how it runs through and rests on the fuselage it, there's no need for it I mean this wing is super strong so I don't even bar bother putting in the carbon fiber rod I mean you guys could always put a piece in there I mean before you apply pry your KF airfoils leave those off install a piece of carbon fiber rod through there maybe something like that then you could go ahead and apply your KF airfoils back over the carbon fiber rod so you bury it. Alright, let's get on to hooking up. So here I got some little clevises. I believe that's what they call them. And I believe these are control horns. You can also get these kind. These are Dubro control horns just for park flyer jets and planes. Alright, so here I got a piece of carbon fiber rod I'm going to be using to hook up my ailerons with. Another thing I'll tell you is, is I didn't install on the plans I don't mark where to install your servos you just can put them where you, where you choose I mean you could have them far back up here all you do is you line it up with the body go ahead and mark around it cut out the foam board and then push this right down in there and as you can see I got my uh, elevator right here and then I'll use on the opposite side of this one is my rudder which will go on this side of the plane and I'll do the same thing with that so like I said I didn't mark it on the plans because <clears throat> some guys like to install them further back I mean the more tail heavy you make a 3d plane the better it's gonna hover What I'll end up doing is I'll I'll put mine somewhere around the center of the tail boom here. But you just can put yours where you want. And to find and to get the CG on your plane, I mean you just move your battery. You know, the battery's gonna be installed under here on this side. And for your CG you can just move this sucker wherever you want. Let's go ahead and install a couple of these control rods. Here I got my carbon fiber rod. I'm going to need a cutting tool. Alright, for these uh, control rods. I won't even glue these on first. I'm going to do some test fitting before I do any hot gluing around the end here. And I never put hot glue all the way up inside because I might take these off at some point. Build another plane. For now I'll just eyeball them up, see what, what kind of piece I'm going to need here. Most likely just install one of these for you. What I'll do is get it up on there. I got these from my local hobby shop. They're pretty awesome. You can see they got a little lock piece down here. There. 
up after I put the lock up facing upward. So I got my control rod and my clevis hooked down to my servo arm here. Now for my control horn, I like to put them at a little angle. I'm going to drop it back probably almost a half inch from the leading edge of the aileron here. I'm just going to eyeball it up here. So here I got my little clevis. I'm going to install this on here. What I like to do usually is take a little piece of blue tape. I like using blue tape on foam board because it doesn't tend to peel the paper off. I'll tape my aileron nice and secure. I'm going to take a mark where I need this. I'm going to cut my carbon fiber rod back a little. It's best to cut carbon fiber rod with a Dremel. Well, you get a nice clean cut. Done. 
I'll take pull this blue painters tape off. I want to see how much throw I'm getting. Which that looks like it's going to be plenty. So that's where I'm going to want to hot glue my control horn on. I like to get a lot of hot glue on this. Make sure you keep your aileron straight with the body here. Nice and flush. Let that set up for a second. I like these little control linkages. And using carbon fiber rod, it's really lightweight. I want a nice light 3D plane. Honestly guys, I don't even know how to fly 3D yet. I'm damn sure going to try to learn with this one. Alright, so there you go. We got a lot of throw. That turned out sweet. Go ahead and lock the sucker up. Try to move over to the other side. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and throw a throw these servos on for you. All right, so that's how you hook up your linkage for your ailerons. It was pretty simple. And like I said, the further back you put your control uh, control horn, the more movement you'll get on your ailerons. So I set it back about a half inch from the hinge line here, from the pivot point. All right, now I'll show you what I was talking about installing these. All right, here I got my elevator servo. I'm gonna be placing these about halfway back on my boom here, on the tail boom. I'll just simply mark it out with a pen. I want this plane to be good and tail heavy. Now I'll take and cut out for the servo. There I got my elevator servo and I'll do I'll hook up the same kind of control system here that I got here back here. I'll simply install a control horn back here with another carbon fiber rod. With the clevises on both ends of the carbon fiber rod. Go ahead and drop my rudder servo on here. Like I said, I just line it up with the opposite, opposite side of the other one. Disconnect. You want to put your hot glue. Alright, and for the tail, I went ahead 
once I slid my two pieces together for my fuselage, I went ahead and hot glued that spot that we cut, put that back together, and that was after I already installed my elevator. As you can see, I just used scotch tape across both sides of the elevator. And then on the underside, I always just take and put a few pieces of scotch tape long way. Yeah, alright, I'm back. This is part three of the Profile 3D plane. When I left off, I had cut out all the pieces. I told you I was going to go ahead and take it all back apart and do some painting. I'll just tell you real quick how I paint these things. When I had all my pieces apart, I had the KF airfoils off. I just painted the KF airfoils separate. And then I used blue painter's tape just to tape off the ailerons that I wanted blue. And then for the fuselage, I just painted that whole piece individually. Like I said, the whole plane was apart when I did the painting. But again, make sure you guys hot glue everywhere your pieces connect. Like I just ran a bead down both ends of the wings, all across the front. I already installed my motor. I brushed this motor and prop here. I just went ahead and cut out. Now for you guys, I didn't put it on the plans because I figured whatever motor you use, you can just cut it out to your size. And I just drop it back in there about a half inch. As you can see, the tail's got a lot of movement. My elevator and my rudder. Then our ailerons. What's up, ticker? All right, so when we left off, I had all the pieces pretty much assembled. But I went ahead, did my painting, but went ahead and assembled the pieces. I hot glued everywhere they connect. I even went ahead and hot glued the KF airfoils on. And then once you get your KF airfoils on, I go ahead and hit a hot glue bead right down the each side. Pretty much anywhere all your pieces. This is going to be a 3D plane, so I got to have a lot of movement on the elevator. And the same thing for the for the rudder. I just put one long piece of scotch tape. And then put a four or five connecting pieces. We got a lot of movement in that rudder. Then for the ailerons, I just went ahead and hit them with a piece of scotch tape right across them. I didn't even bother with the bottoms. You don't have to install no scotch tape down there. 